Hello, this is Timothy Perfit from Two Canoe Software, and I'm really excited to bring you a video on how to use Microsoft's SCCM to be able to deploy uh, Windows 10 using WinClone uh, 8.01. Um, it's a, uh, something we've been investigating for a long time. We work with some customers and be able to figure out kind of a, the, the best way to go about uh, to doing it. We've been uh, documented and supporting using MDT for the last year, year and a half um, using WinClone 8. But uh, using SCCM has been, um, uh, it's been a different uh, technique, slightly different technique than MDT. And so this video is going to kind of document how to go through the steps. So what I have set up here is I have uh, uh, Windows Server 2019 running in a VM on this Mac. Uh, and it's basically going to be like your SCCM setup. It's a domain controller and SCCM is installed, SQL Server. It's version SCCM 2016 as well as SQL Server, Microsoft uh, SQL Server 20, 2016. And what we're going to be doing is creating a uh, task sequence with an operating system and the uh, blue boot image drivers and all that stuff. Um, be able to create uh, what's called a pre-stage media, and then we'll take that and, and uh, extract a whim from it, uh, which is what normally is uh, created when you do when you export the pre-stage media. And then we'll create a, a win clone image and then a win clone package out of it so when that package is deployed it'll create a bootcamp partition restore that pre-stage media and then when it boots up it'll go into that normal win pe environment where you can select a task sequence and uh, deploy windows uh, right from sccm uh, because it is a pre-stage media it does have the image uh, of Windows in it, so that means it's a lot faster because it's got that cache content. But if you update any of the content, that new content is pulled down. So it kind of gives you the best of both worlds where you're able to have fast deployment, but then you have the flexibility to change things if you want to. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into SCCM and, and show you kind of the uh, um, how the setup works. So I'll switch over. Okay, so here I have SCCM. And the first thing I'm going to do is go and uh, import. Uh, I already have imported my boot images that came with SCCM. Uh, and so the operating system images. So the I'll add an operating system image. So this is uh, the operating system, Im operating system image comes from um, some uh, from the uh, Microsoft Windows install media, the ISO. And if you look in the sources, there'll be an installed at WIM. And so I copy that to a network share, share and here's the install that whim so I'll select it and it'll, it found that it was Windows and it's actually Windows 10 uh, Pro and this one is 1909 so I'll just give it that name and that's it it's gonna import it and so now it's gonna uh, import that resource and uh, then when we deploy those resources to a distribution point, it'll be able to use those. So we've installed or we've uh, imported the Windows operating system. Next thing we're going to do is import the drivers. And so uh, one of the things that uh, was nice about um, the uh, the way for way of getting drivers from Apple is if you boot, open up Bootcamp Assistant, you'll be able to download the drivers for that current machine. So for this machine here, I just go into Bootcamp Assistant and run. Uh, bootcamp assistant then go to the I think it's the action menu and choose uh, save Windows support software um, there's also a utility that I want to show you that I just love it's called bombardier and uh, what it allows you to do is download any of the Windows drivers um, from any Mac model and you can search by the Mac identifier you can do it by the Mac model number um, you can do it by and I'll show you which which ones are in which bootcamp driver packages so it's a great way to um, download the drivers if you don't have you don't have to have access to that specific piece of hardware so um, just search for bombardier and it, it's uh, I believe it's on a github repository it's a free piece of software but it's a uh, really really helpful um, so what I want to do is I've already done that so I, I want to just I switch over to drivers so I'll say import driver so I'm not actually going to import those drivers because it takes a long time. And what's nice about this 2015 uh, MacBook Pro is that it uh, doesn't require any drivers for basic operation. So um, normally that oper you can just import those drivers, what you want to do, and then when we uh, actually create the task sequence, I'll show you where you can use those drivers. But for now, we won't bother uh, importing those. All right, so the next thing we can do now that we've created 
we have the drivers, we have the operating system, and we have the boot image. All we want to do is create a task sequence. After, and the task sequence is basically what, what's going to be so selected when you boot into the WinP environment on the Mac and run. Um, and then uh, we'll, after that, we will create a task sequence media, which then we'll use to create the WinClone package out of it. So we'll, I'll right click here on, on this area here and do create task sequence. And so you have a bunch of different options. Let's go ahead and do the first one, install an existing image package. I'll go to next and give it a task sequence name and we'll call this uh, deploy boot camp and get, not going to give it description and we'll browse to the boot image and we'll select the uh, x80 I'm sorry the 64-bit uh, x64 boot image um, and then the image package is going to be our Windows 10 that we just created so the uh, Windows 10 Pro and it has different uh, the image index this WIM contains multiple versions of it so I will choose uh, Windows 10 Pro. One thing I want to point out is do not select the partition and format the target computer. That will cause problems with the Mac because of uh, Windows not really aware of the APFS or HFS plus partitions. Um, so you want to deselect the partition and format it. That's fine. WinClone will handle that. Um, also, the configure the task sequence to use uh, with BitLocker. We're going to disable that. I believe it's possible to be able to en en enable it, but for this, we're not going to do that. We'll leave the rest of them. Uh, oh, no, actually, we'll want to enable the uh, account, administrator account, uh, local administrator account, and we'll put a password. Okay, now that that's done, we'll go to next. Um, and we want to have it actually join a domain because we do have a domain, and we will select our lab.local domain. And we'll put the uh, computer in our own two canoes OU which is a great place to put, to put it. Um, and then the, the uh, user account to bind. Normally you'd have a specific account to bind to Active Directory, but we'll just go ahead because this is a lab and use the local or the domain administrator, which is definitely not a best practice, but for lab it's fine. Okay. okay, let's test this again. Hey, I got it right this time. Now moving onwards, so we finished that. We added it to um, its own OU, bound it with uh, this Active Directory, and then install the Configuration Manager client. That's great. We do want to have that. It's up to you if you want to install it, but for, for this we will. We're not going to be capturing any of the user files, so we'll do deselect all of those. Um, and then software updates, we'll skip those for now. Uh, install applications. We're not going to install any applications. Um, and then here's the details. And now it go ahead, goes ahead and creates the task sequence. So the task sequence has been created. Um, and so what we want to do here is now we want to deploy, uh, distribute the content. And so we'll distribute this content, and that pushes it out to our distribution points. Okay, I'll select the distribution point, click OK, and then hit Next. Uh, so now we're, I looked at the summary, it looked fine, so then I finish it. And now the uh, content has been pushed out to my distribution points. Um, so now we also have to deploy this uh, uh, task sequence. So I will push out the task sequence to the uh, all. It'll be part of the all unknown computers. And I want to make sure it's available to and this important configuration manager clients. Uh, media and, and Pixie, so we will uh, we're going to be doing it through media, so we'll do that. We don't need a schedule. We're going to show all the different options for uh, the user experience. Um, leave these as defaults. These are defaults. That's fine. Okay. So now that uh, task sequence has been deployed out to the uh, distribution points. So at this point your environment should be completely ready to be able to do it. We can actually look, if we look under ad sets and compliant, oh no sorry, under, oh sorry it's under administration, distribution points. And then we can look at the uh, status, look at the content. And so we looked here, everything's 100%. So that means everything has been deployed successfully to our distribution points. So we're all set and we're ready to go ahead and create that uh, pre-stage uh, media. So we'll go back to software library test sequence 
and we will just click on here and say create task sequence media and we want to choose pre-stage media dynamic media and uh, the uh, media file we'll call this and we'll save this to our uh, SharePoint and we'll call this um, pre-stage media demo we'll click on save and go next uh, we don't need a password protect it you can if you want to we do want to uh, enable unknown computer support so we don't have to add this MacBook Pro in prior to it the scheduling is fine we don't need an affinity device infinity we have to select a um, task sequence and we'll use the deploy dual boot the one we just created and it shows us there's these resources that looks correct so we'll go to next now we have to choose the boot media again that's uh, the x80 uh, x64 um, and the distribution point that it's on is the uh, the only one for this and then the management port is our management port and then the select the version of windows again we'll do windows 10 pro from the distribution point our only distribution point and then for install applications package content we don't have any oh i'm sorry we do we do have that the configure manager configuration manager client and then uh, the driver package remember before i told you where you would select the drivers um, you would add them here and so then it would it use this to put it on the install media as well so we go to next uh, we'll add in that distribution point for the media and we don't need to customize with any variables we verify the summary and now we're ready to actually create the task sequence media so this will create the test uh, sequence media um, which will be a WIM file and then what we'll do is on this Mac uh, we will install WinClone and uh, WinClone Pro and then create a WinClone image and then a WinClone package and from there we'll be able to deploy uh, start deploying Macs with Windows 10 on them uh, through SCCM so this will take a while so we'll do a little time lapse and I'll come back and uh, and we'll, we'll carry it on from there this usually takes about 15 minutes all right, it is now completed. So the task sequence, uh, the create task sequence media wizard is completed and successfully. So now we'll close this out and uh, minimize the SCCM console and look and see uh, in the explorer that it should be under images. I should have this new, um, there it is, pre uh, stage media demo.win. And you can see that this is a 4 gig file, 4.8 gig file. So the next thing I'll do is I'll go over to the Mac side with WinClone and be able to create an image. So again, that pre-stage media is just going to bring up a, P Win a WinPE environment where you can select the task sequence. So let me switch over to that. I'll be right back. Okay, so now I'm on the, actually you can see I'm on this uh, MacBook Pro here, and it's got WinClone running. And what I'm going to do is... Uh, be able to uh, get that whim from the Windows server and then from there I'll create a WinClone image of it. So what I'll do is I'll connect up to uh, that Windows server um, and so nice thing is I, I, I saved it to a share so I'll be able to connect up to it easily. I'll put my administrator in and you can see all the different shares and I'll choose the images share and you can see there's the pre-stage media demo.wim and I'll take that and I will copy it over to my desktop and so I'll let that copy and then once it's complete oh it's not going to take that long I've got oh it's a I got Ethernet cables connected up to a gig switch here so um, I'll be able to easily uh, or it'll be quickly to copy it over okay that's been copied to the desktop so now what we need to do in WinClone is go up to the tools menu and choose a um, create Windows Im or WinClone image from WIM. So we'll select the WIM that's on the desktop. And the important thing, one of the important things is this checkbox here, make WinPE bootable and restore. So that means when this image is restored, it'll set the, uh, the BCD as well as the, the um, EFI partition to be able to boot into the uh, WinPE environment. So it basically boots from a, a WIM. Um, so I'll click on save image 
Okay, so now it's going to be saved as pre-stage media wind clone image, and I'll save that to the desktop as well. Um, it's very fast because it's on APFS and it just does a, a copy on, on write, and it's not writing, so it's very fast. Um, so you can see that here's our wind clone image. And so we could go ahead and restore this and then boot to WinPE and do this, but really what I want to do is show how to make a package to be able to deploy this. So, so what I'll do now is I'll do a create package and I'll select that image. And um, the other tabs don't matter and they won't, they won't be applied. Um, and I can select how I want to create a partition. So this partition is going to be both the partition that WinPE boots up from, as well as the Windows system gets applied to. So you want to make it the size that you want to have the final Win clone or the final bootcamp partition. Um, I always like to do restore to existing partition and find it if it's the only one. Otherwise, it creates it, and I'll make it 50-50 Mac Windows. So that's a good one. Let me move this over a bit so you can see it. So then I'll click on Create Package, and I'll call this uh, Pre-Stage... Uh, media wind clone package and there it goes and that's very quick as well because once again it's not it's on APFS and it's copying uh, that large image very fast so basically making a reference to it all right so now I can run it so let me go ahead and I'll quit wind clone and then I'll install that package so that package can be used and pushed out through any client management suite you have. You can double click on it, you can use a, a thumb drive, whatever you want to do. So however you install a normal WinClone package, it would do that. So I'll just click on OK and I'll hit install. Put in my admin credentials. And then if I do if I do a command L and command 3, it will show me the log as it's being restored. All right, so I'll let that complete, and then I'll come back, and we'll boot into Windows, and we'll see what it looks like. All right, so it's nearing the end of the restore. Um, it's setting the, the, the disk to be bootable, so it'll complete any minute now. There it goes. Installation was successful. So now we have a drive uh, with Windows with WinPE on it. So now we're ready to reboot the machine into WinPE and actually start the restore. So let me go ahead and switch back to overhead. So you can see this is the Mac that will be doing it. This one's going to be, this is their distribution point. Um, I'm, in order to be able to show the reboot, we can show it here. But if I'm lucky, I'll be able to uh, um, show the screen in, if I close the lid... I'll be able to hold the option key down. Let's see if that allows us to see the boot selector. All right, so now we can select the uh, WinPE volume and boots up into WinPE. And uh, hopefully then we'll be able to select our test sequence and go from there. So we got the ASCII bar that goes across, so we know that we're in the WinPE environment. And there it goes. It's loading up the WinPE environment. And I'll click on Next. It'll find, oh, there it is. It found the two task sequences I have defined. One we created was that Deploy Bootcamp. So let's go ahead and it's checking out the dependencies. It's going to apply the operating system and all the settings and then reboot and start setting up Windows. So it looks like it's working. Um, we'll let it run through for a bit and verify that it's actually reboots and starts installing. There it goes. So it's completed. You can see how fast that was because we were using the cache content. And if you were to ch make any changes on the server side, I don't have to hold down the option key now. Uh, you can see I'm just not holding anything. Um, and it uh, will boot up and start installing Windows. Um, so. Um, this this process, of course, takes a few minutes because it, it has to configure Windows based on that settings. I had it bang to Active Directory and set up a local administrator account. So um, it'll take a few minutes. Um, but at this point, this is kind of the normal process that's managed by SCCM.
So now it's booted up into Windows, and let's see if it's, it is bound to Active Directory. So it's uh, signed into Lab, so I'll go ahead and put in Lab User. And the password. Okay, there it is. Windows is now completely set up um, and bound to Active Directory, and it did exactly everything in the test sequence we wanted to. So the idea is that you could push this out to a whole bunch of Macs, and they would be able to have boot camp partitions um, based on uh, the configuration you have on the SCCM distribution points. So thanks very much for watching. Please visit us at twocanoes.com slash winclone to find out more information and uh, and, and if you need a trial to be able to try it out in your SCCM environment, we're more than willing to provide that. Um, so I'm very excited and thank you very much for watching and please check back for more of these videos as well as visit the website and uh, and see this, the, we documented this whole process as well. Thanks very much for watching.